the Bitcoin having is coming up soon. And a lot of investors are planning for Bitcoin to go higher. But those same investors are going to leave a lot of money at the table if they don't follow two simple tips I'm gonna share with you today. One of the interesting things for me in recent months as someone who follows Bitcoin, but it's not the only thing that I follow, is watching the price go up driven by rather predictable news events. So the idea of a spot ETF, the idea of now the Bitcoin halving, the idea that we know these events are driving the price and we can expect, many Bitcoin investors expect, the price will go higher on that news means there's plenty of time to plan ahead for two things I'm going to talk to you about today. One of those things is tax planning. One of those things is citizenship planning. And I'm not talking about planning just until the halving. I'm not talking about just for the next few months. I'm talking about what's the five-year plan that you're going to use to make sure you keep more of the money that you're expecting to make in Bitcoin and that you're well protected as more and more governments around the world, including Western governments, become greedy and want to take more of your Bitcoin. Let's talk about tax planning. Here's a very simple fact. We've talked about it for years. When you depart many countries, you pay an exit tax. I was telling people early in 2023, you had Bitcoin at relatively low levels. A lot of people were back to the level that they bought in at. They were even. And so they had the opportunity, I told them, to leave the country. If you're an American, that means you're going to go to Puerto Rico or you're going to expatriate and give up your citizenship. If you're from pretty much anywhere else, you're going to leave your country. Some Europeans have a limited list of countries they can move to. Some people have a wide open list of places they can move to. But either way, you're getting out of your country's tax system. And if your country has an exit tax, that means, let's say you bought Bitcoin at $20,000 and you leave it $20,000, you don't have a capital gain to pay tax on. You get to leave, you get to go to any country you want, and you get to play under their tax system for when Bitcoin goes from 20 to 40 to 60 to 100 to wherever. Now, if you haven't done that, you've already left some money on the table. But if you're planning with the halving, spot ETF, whatever else could come up for Bitcoin to go higher, well, don't get stuck. And I'm going to tell you a story. We've worked with entrepreneurs here at Nomad Calculus for years, and we've had multiple clients that will hire us multiple different times as their business grows. We had one gentleman, I think the business was worth, you know, $5 million when he first hired us. We gave him some advice. He ended up doing it on his own. Came back to us a couple more times. Last time was, I'm selling my business. I'm ready to sign the contract. What can I do to lower my tax? The reality is it got to a position where there was nothing he could do, not because he was already selling it. I mean, you want to profit off of deltas. If you, you know, if your business is worth $5 million, you want to leave the tax system so that everything from 5 to 50 is tax-free or very lightly taxed. You don't want to wait until it's worth 50 and then come back and, oh, what can I do? You, you focus on the deltas. And so the earlier you can get out, whether you own a business, whether you have stocks, whether you have Bitcoin, cryptocurrency, whatever, is you know keep as much of the upside for when you're in a tax friendly place as possible. But what we see with entrepreneurs is they do wait too long. And because their business is illiquid, they've taken financing, they have a certain value in the business, but they can't necessarily sell more shares. They literally can't afford to leave because they can't afford to pay the exit tax. They don't have the liquidity they need. Now, if you're in Bitcoin, there's plenty of liquidity. But the question is, you know, do you want to uh, pay a little bit now to save a lot later? Or are you going to play the game of, well, when it's worth $100,000 of Bitcoin, I won't mind. The tax rates don't change. If you've got a 25% tax or a 33% tax or a 40% tax on your capital gains, that's 40%, whether it's 1,000, 100,000, or 100 million. And I can tell you from personal experience, we all kind of lie to ourselves and say, well, if I have more money, I won't care then. Whatever amount of money you have is how much money you have, and the 40% still stings, right? Because now you have that much money, and you don't want to pay 40% on that. And so ideally, the best time to leave, if you think things are going up, I saw Arthur Hayes uh, predicting a 30% Bitcoin crash, and that it should quickly you know, come back up. If you can time things, and this requires some advanced planning, if it's going to be kind of a short-term 30% crash, this is just what Arthur Hayes says, I'm not, I'm not saying this, you want to be ready to have all your tax affairs in order to where the day you check out is at the bottom of that 30% drop. Nobody can predict exactly where's the top, where's the bottom. But if you can be gone in that period, you, know, you want to have your affairs ready. It might take a couple months to prepare things, start closing down your ties to your country, start getting the proper tax advice, start 
you know, setting up residences somewhere else, get your affairs in order a couple months in advance so that when, if there is a dip, you can say, okay, that's the time that I'm going to leave. Because you don't want to say, oh, I'll just pay more when I have the money. Uh, here's the reality about exit taxes. Depending on the country and depending on when it is that you leave your country, you may be able to not even pay that tax for a year or sometimes even more. Every country is different, but if you can time it to leave at a certain part of the tax year, i.e. earlier in the tax year, then you could potentially say, okay, I'll just pay that a year from now. Obviously, you want to be careful that, you know, if you do, you know, if the tax bill comes due when Bitcoin's down 30%, you still have to pay the bill in fiat currency. But if you expect things to keep going up, you have the proper reserves, you can basically delay that bill. I'd rather you, from my own personal opinion, you know, find the right time to leave with the right tax advice to be able to pay the bill a little bit later. Know that bill is coming. Know what it is in fiat currency. Lock that in. And just take the hit now rather than say, well, why take a hit when things haven't reached the top? Well, because then things reach the top, the hit's going to be bigger. And you're going to look back then and say, well, why didn't I do it when Bitcoin was at $45,000, right? You know, hindsight's always 20, 20. I can just, I can tell you from experience, I've done this myself. I sometimes wish I would have just taken the hit earlier, whether it was getting a citizenship before the price went up, getting a citizenship before I was no longer eligible for it, uh, or, you know, leaving the country for tax. So whatever tax rate you're going to pay, it's just going to be more and more and more. You know, countries are increasingly making tax on crypto a bigger thing, and Western countries are looking to increase the tax rates. The other thing that's the issue is the residence permit you want for a place to leave your country, which you might need in many cases to get out of your country. Hey, where are you going, your country might ask. Uh, I'm just going to bum around the world. Depending on where you live, that may not be an acceptable answer. Where are you going to go? Where are you going to be a tax resident? Those programs, as there's not only more Bitcoiners and crypto investors who are going other places, but as there's so many more wealthy people from emerging markets who are looking for uh, safe haven residence permits, the prices are going up. Case in point, Hong Kong's talked about bringing back their residence permit. It's going to be triple the price of when they canceled it uh, about a decade ago. Citizenship prices go up. Residence prices go up. Malaysia more than tripled uh, the price of their residence permit. Now they're bringing it down a little bit, but it's still going to be higher than what it was before. And so it's gonna cost you more to set this up. You know, the idea that the number always goes up, we saw that in 2021. We had people tell us, yeah, you know what? I'm gonna wait until it gets to 100,000. They could have done a better job preparing. Now, if you are an American, the system is you're either gonna go to Puerto Rico, certainly an option. We've helped people do it. We do all the tax planning. It's a thing where you have to go and you have to be in Puerto Rico. I think a lot of people don't realize that. Where they think there's some loophole. There's not. You got to be down there. Or you're going to expatriate. Well, if you're going to expatriate, you need to have a second citizenship first or multiple second citizenships. Here's the good news, though, if you're an American. If you have under $2 million, so long as your taxes are in order and so long as you haven't had some huge income with, with huge federal income tax liability of the last uh, couple of years, you can theoretically get out and just say, hey, I don't even qualify for the exit tax. And so for some people, you want to not wait until you cross a certain threshold, i.e. in the U.S., that $2 million threshold, again, assuming that you don't check the other criteria, uh, because then it's much, much, much easier for you. And so for years now, we've had people who are investing in Bitcoin, but they're like, all right, I have $1 million now. This is my time. Like, let me take the hit. And then I'll ride it all the way up to the top and I'll have, you know, yes, I'll be paying for a citizenship. Yes, I'll be, you know, getting some tax advice, but it's going to be a lot cheaper than me paying that exit tax once I hit that $2 million number. So that's the tax planning part. Bottom line is you want to get out early. I'm telling you from my own experience, I wish I would have taken some of the hits. I've, I've gotten numerous different citizenships, some of which required investments. It always stings a little bit. You know, I hire tax professionals all around the world to help me on stuff. Sometimes I don't even go through with it. You know, it's, it's, a, it's a fact of life for me. If you're doing it for the first time, I get it. It stings a little bit. Do you know what stings? Paying 25, 33, 40%, 50% tax on crypto when if there's a bull run, you don't know how high it's going to go. You don't know how that bill is going to be. And again, if all you're thinking about is how rich I'm going to be 
Well, you're going to be half as rich or two thirds as rich if you don't make this move. The second part, though, I want you to think about is citizenship planning. Because as you mentioned, if you are an American, even if you're not doing the moving right now, get your second citizenship in order. One thing I love about people in the Bitcoin and the crypto space is they are much more international minded than the average person. Uh, and so they are mobile, right? You can have your Bitcoin anywhere. That's kind of the whole use case. You can take it with you. And so if you're an American, even if you don't plan on expatriating, you never know how bad it can get because the U.S. does tax you no matter where you live. That's why as an investor, you're at a disadvantage compared to, let's say, an entrepreneur. Entrepreneurs can move overseas. They can structure their business. They can pay a pretty low rate of tax, keep their U.S. citizenship. Now, if they sell that business, that goes in the bucket of being an investor. But the active profits from the business, if you don't plan on selling, that's much more manageable. Crypto, Bitcoin, you've got Puerto Rico, you've got expatriation. Those are your two big options. And so because you have more limited options, I want you to have a second passport well in advance. Citizenship by investment in the Caribbean and other places. It's going to take you about six months if you can get your paperwork together pretty quickly. This is why I think everyone in Bitcoin should be hiring nomad capitalists because we have a whole system of making the paperwork faster, doing a lot of the legwork for you. We've got people who can speed up the process, obviously in very legitimate ways, just in terms of notaries and things like that that moves faster. You know, I've, I've talked to Bitcoiners. It takes them 18 months to get a passport. We, we'll get people in six months. Time is money, especially when you might want to make a move during a bull run. So that's a minimum case, six months to get a passport. If you have some ancestry in Europe, that can be a good passport to get. But that's probably going to take years. In some cases, it may take three, four, or even five years. So even if you're not planning on needing the passport now, if you want to go the more affordable options, it's going to take a lot longer than six months. You want to get that passport ready in advance. Maybe you never expatriate. And I'm not saying you should expatriate just because you want to save some money. But you know what? If you start to make, you know, millions and tens of millions of dollars, it really starts to put in your head. I think this applies to almost anybody. Am I getting value for this? Especially if you don't really care about living in the U.S., why are you going to pay that much money to the U.S. when you want to live somewhere in Europe? Why would you pay them all that tax to get nothing in return? If you're not an American and you're not subject to what's called citizenship-based taxation, we're seeing some countries that are making it more difficult to leave their tax net. I think in the future, you might want a second passport. We've had people from Australia and the UK, for example, come and say, I need to get a passport. I'll ask them why. Our team will ask them why. They'll say, well, I don't want to pay tax on my crypto. You don't need a second passport, we'll tell them. This is why they're very happy they hired Nomad Capitalists, because we saved them you know, $100,000 plus by giving them the straight scoop. Right? If you just watch these videos, you might not get all the nuance of what's required. But here's what I would tell you if you're Australian or German or or uh, British or anything else, is I would be working towards some kind of passport. I would get a residence permit in a country, Latin America, two, three, five years, you can get a passport with you know, part-time physical presence. There are golden visas in Europe. Um, there are other ways to get citizenship. We can check your family tree again. And so those programs are all gonna take multiple years. Everyone, especially Westerners, needs some kind of second passport. Crypto is an increasing focus. They want to raise taxes. They want to make it harder to get out of the tax debt. Remember, Western countries have competition for the first time in a long time, and they don't like it. They're not responding by being competitive and saying, oh, well, Dubai is low tax. We'll, we'll, we'll lower our tax rates. No, they're responding by making it harder for you. And crypto is going to be one of the least sympathetic areas. Not many people are going to care. Oh, we're taxing the Bitcoin guys. Yeah, good. We don't like them, the average person will say. So you want to have a passport. You don't have to necessarily have the $100,000 passport that comes in six months if you're British or Australian or, again, whatever. But start the clock working on something so that God knows what happens in the world of regulation and taxes three years from now. You have it in your hand. If you are in Bitcoin, what you believe is take the power back from the government, take the power back from the banks, put it in your own hand, control your own destiny. Do the same thing with your citizenship. And if you're able to depart your country and save more money on taxes, a small part of those tax savings can fund your citizenship planning. You're going to have sovereignty over yourself. You want to do it all legally. That's what we help people do is put the puzzle pieces together. Just getting a Caribbean passport and not knowing how to use it, not recommended. Because again, you might not need that Caribbean passport. The guy who sells Caribbean passports, that's all he sells to everyone. If you come to me and you tell me a story where you don't need one, I'm going to say, 
save your money. Let's do this instead. Let's save 100 grand. Let's do this over here. And so that's what Nomad Capitals offers. Holistic tax and citizenship planning. We understand Bitcoin. We understand crypto. You can pay in Bitcoin if you want. But this is how you're preparing for the Bitcoin halving, is making sure that you're keeping as much money and making sure that you're in control of the situation. <laughs>